everyone. Good afternoon. This is Yelena Stabasic with Dean Jordan. Um, happy Tuesday and welcome to this special webinar that we're doing today um, on Power BI, Intelligent and Insightful Reporting at Your Fingertips. We have a really big group today, so we're excited. Um, this is kind of our first launch of showcasing this product and just some tips and tricks on reporting and how you can enhance your report. So excited to show that to you. Um, just a couple of questions before we begin. Um, so I had a couple of questions that came in. Will people be receiving CPE credit for this? Unfortunately, not for this webinar, but we do have a few upcoming webinars that do qualify for CPE credit. So if you visit the Dean Dorton website on our events page, you'll see some webinars that will qualify for CPE credit. So you can keep a lookout for those. Um, if at any point during the presentation you have any questions that come up, um, please feel free to type them up in the chat box. You should see that on the right side of your screen on the GoToWebinar um, little thing on the side. Um, and we do have some time allotted at the end for Q&A, so we will definitely go over those. And then um, something that I encourage everyone to fill out, we do have a survey at the end that's four or five little questions. It'll take you one minute. Um, it should pop up on your screen. So we always appreciate the feedback on these webinars. And also it'll ask you if you wanna kind of take a deeper dive into Power BI after this webinar. So um, we'd appreciate all your answers. And with that being said, I will hand it off to Philip first. Philip, you there? Yep, sorry, nope. um, audio issue, sorry. Um, Yelena, thank you very much okay. for that introduction. Um, as as Yelena said, we are gonna take a look today at Power BI. Uh, glad to have Linda Bowles on the webinar as well. Linda is one of our senior software consultants and the uh, person most knowledgeable in the firm on Power BI. Uh, it's been through a lot of training classes and she's excited to talk with you about it today. All right, so let's jump in. We've got a few slides to go through. Uh, we will work our way down towards an actual demo of the Power BI product, so never fear there. You will actually see it um, during this, but we do have some slides to kind of give you some background as well. First, we'll tell you just a little bit about Dean Dorton. Um, we're a full service CPA firm. We've got headquarters in Lexington with offices in Louisville, Kentucky, as well as Raleigh. So we're in multiple states, but we serve clients throughout the Southeast region nationally and internationally. Um, I think we probably need to maybe make another state or two yellow there, but we cover a lot of the uh, the country with our clientele and some international, as it says. We offer tax and auditing, assurance services, outsourced accounting, um, IT audit, cybersecurity, litigation, and software evaluation, selection, and implementation. So if you're in the market for any of those services, in addition to Power BI, we'd, of course, love to talk with you. Enough of the sales pitch. Uh, the agenda for today, we're gonna talk a little bit about uh, the extension of our Microsoft partnership, the overview of current reporting options. We'll do an intro to Power BI, uh, then jump into the demo, and then we'll follow it up with Q&A. So a lot of exciting things uh, happening. First, we wanna take some poll questions. So we wanna gauge our audience um, we've got a lot of people, as, as Yelena said, on the line here. So we want to kind of gauge our audience. If you would, pull out your cell phone. You can see it on the screen here. Grab your cell phone if you don't have it with you. Dial 22333 uh, for texting or send a text message to 22333. And in that text message, put in the word Dean Dorton. All one word, all lowercase. If you don't have your cell phone and want to do it over the internet, you can also go to poll.ev.com, type in Dean Dorton and select join. Okay. That'll help us get some 
responses here to different questions uh, that we'll have. And so let's jump into those questions. So the first one here is intended to find out where you are today. Uh, why are you here today? I'm sorry. Uh, currently using Power BI would we'll like to gain more information, actively pursuing comparing solutions, possibly considering a reporting tool, or it's just a great day for a webinar. We're home, we're at work, we can't go out, uh, so we're sitting here at a webinar today. Okay. So we've got a few that are using it. Um, a third of the room is hanging out because they thought it would be a cool webinar, uh, which is okay. Another third is, is just starting their journey. So that's good. That's good. All right, we got a little bit of a mix of folks here. So next question, what industry are you in? Healthcare, nonprofit, professional services, equine, other? All right, so we got a lot of other by far. Over half are not in the industries listed. Okay. All right, very valid. Let's go to the uh, next one. So what is your organization's current accounting system? A lot of what we talk about, a lot of what the reporting that happens is based on accounting data, revenue, uh, expenses. You know, you're going to want to do customer comparisons. You might want to see a chart of how products are selling. <clears throat> so a lot of times you're dealing with financial data when you're writing these, uh, these reports. And looks like we've got a pretty good mix. Okay. I always wish there was a, a way to put an answer in there for other as to what other was, but. All right. How familiar are you with Power BI? Three choices this time. Fully use it. I've heard of it. Might know a little bit about it. But hey, I don't know anything about it. And that's why I'm here. All right, we got some fully utilized. Very good. Most folks, so it, it sounds like from the answers that we're getting back from this, most folks are here today as an introduction to Power BI, which is which is outstanding. This is really kind of where this presentation was more or less meant to be. Um, it's not an in-depth dive into Power BI, hence that's why we're not giving CPE credit for it. But it's going to be a good introduction. You're going to walk away from here knowing what Power BI is, uh, some things about what it can do, and you know other things like pricing and different components of it, things like that. Right? So that's good. That's very good. All right, put your cell phones away. And let's jump into a few more slides before I turn it over to Linda. So one of the reasons that we're doing this uh, is that we are expanding our relationship with Microsoft. So at Dean Dorton and the portion of the company that I uh, oversee is the software division, which is financial software. So we're talking about products like Sage Impact um, or a, a Dynamics 365, Dynamics GP, mid-market level packages. And so we're excited to be diving more into Dynamics 365, Business Central, and the accompanying products like Power BI, uh, like Power Apps. We'll, we'll probably have a presentation in the future about power apps as well and some of the things that that can do with flow and all the other stuff um, other offerings as mentioned here intact GP Azure uh, office 365 uh, so really expanding our commitment to the Microsoft channel and everything that comes along with that which part of that is power bi right and we've we've found it to be really an, an outstanding uh, reporting tool all right, so first, let's get a little background on current reporting options that are out there because there were quite a few of you that said we're just starting this journey to find what our reporting options might be. 
um, again, kind of at that beginning point. So let's talk a little bit about what's out there. And these options that we're going to talk about, the first few anyway, are based on the financial software packages that we are a part of. We'll talk a little bit more about some others too, but the first few are based on uh, some of which that, that we are a part of. So first, uh, Sage Intact, it's a cloud-based accounting system. Um, it's got a financial report writer in it. It's got a customer report writer in it. It's got an interactive sort of uh, Excel pivot table based report writer in it. Um, and then Power BI uh, can be used to create reports with the Sage Intact cloud-based application. So you've got a few choices here uh, with the Sage Intact application, and, and it's really known for doing dashboards like this. It, it's very well regarded for that capability, uh, but it has other functions inside of it too from a report writing standpoint, and it can be utilized with Power BI, as Linda's going to show you. Uh, Dynamics GP, sort of a stalwart uh, on-premise uh, accounting application. It's got several report writers in it, management reporter, SQL reporting services, JET reports. One of the things with Dynamics GP, since it's on-premise and SQL-based, a lot of people say about it is really, in a lot of cases, there's too many reporting options uh, for it. Uh, kind of gets a little overwhelming and confusing. But Power BI is certainly one of the choices for Dynamics GP. Um, Interesting thing about 365 Business Central is that Power BI is a native choice for Dynamics 365 Business Central, meaning there's no extra connector, there's no uh, adapter that has to be put in place, there's no extra installs, things like that. Power BI just works with Dynamics 365 Business Central. And in fact, Microsoft really encourages, uh, I think, uh, Power BI to be used with Business Central. So there are some other choices there, and uh, you know we can certainly talk to you about those options also. But uh, to me, a key there is that Power BI is a native connection. And then, of course, there are other reporting tools. There, there's there's literally hundreds of reporting tools out there. Um, Crystal Reports, BI 360, Excel, of course, SQL Reporting Services. But the one constant that we see across a lot of different product lines is Power BI. Um, it's, it's, in my opinion, it's taken it a little while to get off the ground. Uh, but like most Microsoft products, once they get the hang of it, once they build something that is really, really good, they start adding feature sets to that and it really starts to grow and become sort of a mainstream application. You know, most companies will use Office. Most companies use Windows. Um, I think what you'll see is that a lot of companies will utilize Power BI as sort of a standardized reporting platform across, you know, multiple different components. You might have a financial application. You might have an operational system. You might want to bring data from those two together in one reporting platform. Uh, something like a Power BI would give you that capability um, to do that. So, so that's my spiel, um, Linda. I will change presenters over to you and let you take it from here. Thank you, Philip. I appreciate that. Let me just get the PowerPoint up, and I will share my screen. Well, thank you everyone for joining us today. I really um, am excited to show you a little bit of Power BI today. Um, so let's start off with what exactly is Power BI? Well, it's a tool that you can use for business analytics and it's actually part of the Microsoft um, Power Platform. So business uh, Power BI is a business analytic solution that lets you visualize your data and share insights across your organization. Um, you can connect to hundreds of data sources and bring your data to life with dashboards and reports. Uh, Philip mentioned it br 
excuse me, briefly, but one of the key things that separates Power BI from some of the other reporting options that we just discussed are the fact that you can connect to so many different data sources. Um, for example, here at Dean Dorton, we use Sage Intact internally for our accounting software, and our technology group uses ConnectWise to manage our support tickets and projects. With Power BI, we are able to bring that data together in reports. Um, we also have an internal app uh, called Visual where the rest of the firm does their um, time and billing and we can combine the ConnectWise and Visual data. So Power BI has really allowed us to get a broader um, perspective in our reporting. All right, so Power BI is made up of uh, a couple of components. There's the Power BI desktop, and that's an application that you download right onto your computer, and that's where you can um, uh, uh, create your reports, build data models, um, again, connect to multiple data sources. And then there's powerbi.com, which is how you can consume the reports that you create in the cloud. Uh, and then you, if you have the Power BI Pro license, you can share your um, reports with other users in your organization. So this is an example of a slide. It's a sneak peek to a Power BI report that was created by Jay Zwacker. Um, he's our Dean Dorton Manager of Healthcare Consulting Services. And he is here providing some insight into um, physician practice revenue. Um, and I've got a couple more um, healthcare slides I can show later in the presentation. But next up, we're going to talk about how you can connect to Power BI from, um, from your accounting applications. Oh, I jump the gun here. So why Power BI? Well, as we know, when times get tough and we're all experiencing some of that today, um, analytics will become a lot more important. They can provide insights to costs, help you streamline processes, uh, maximize your revenue streams, and work on customer satisfaction and retention. And even better, it can help you avoid the uh, the never-ending reporting loop. All right, so connecting to Power BI, that, that's essential. You have to be able to connect to your data in order to start reporting against it. So with uh, Sage Intact, uh, there is not a native connector, so you'd be needing to use a third-party option, um, and there's one called CData. And essentially, you create an ODBC data source, which allows you to connect to Power BI, Excel, or any other tool where you can use an ODBC connection. ODBC is Open Database Connection. It's just a little connector that tells you where your um, data is, and then you can access it from different applications. So Dynamics GP has a couple of different options, um, and it depends on if you are going to consume the reports either on-premise or in the cloud. Dynamics GP is an on-premise application, so uh, in order to consume the reports outside of your network, you would need to use something like an OData feed, um, which uh, they provide through the application um, with a little additional setup. Uh, you could also use an on-premise data gateway, which is essentially allows uh, the data from your SQL server to be securely transmitted to the cloud. Uh, and then we've got a couple of other options like the refreshable Excel reports that come right out of the box. Um, and then finally, another option for on-premise uh, users are if they're interested in uh, potentially moving to Dynamics 365 Business Central, you can use uh, Cloud Sync to um, maintain your Dynamics GP on-premise uh, data processing, but push data up to the Business Central interface to consume, um, just consume the data uh, through, you know, inquiry only. 
So uh, I think Philip mentioned earlier, Business Central has a, a native connector right inside of Power BI, so there's really not any additional work that needs to be done. And then you also can um, publish Power BI reports right on the um, application, within the application in Business Central. That's also true for Dynamics GP. You can publish your Power BI reports right into the GP app. Um, and all, uh, both Dynamics GP and Business Central have um, some reports already um, out of the box for you to use as a starting point to get you going. I thought we'd throw a uh, little information about QuickBooks in here as well, and, and notice that we do have some QuickBooks users um, attending. Um, in order to connect to Power BI with QuickBooks, you do need to be on QuickBooks Online. And they also uh, provide some reports and dashboards um, out of the box for you to use. Uh, the data is refreshed daily, um, and you need to be an admin in order to, um, to import QuickBooks data into Power BI. So that's it on uh, the applications themselves, but I wanted to give you a little more information on C data, which is what we use for our connection to Sage Intact. Um, if you, it's a subscription service, so if you do subscribe to it, not only do you get access to Sage Intact, but over 150 other connectors are included. So. And last slide before the demo, we've got the pricing here. So most of you would fall under the category of Power BI Pro. I, in fact, I'd be surprised if all of you didn't. Uh, and Power BI Pro is only necessary if you wanna share reports across your organization. So that's $9.99 a month per user. Um, but Power BI Desktop and PowerBI.com are free if you're just a one user wanting to publish your reports to the cloud and consume them yourself. Power BI Premium is for a large scale deployment and that um, pricing is quite a bit steeper, obviously, but I doubt any of you fall under that category. Okay, so let's get to demo. And I'm gonna start with uh, Power BI Desktop. So I've got it downloaded on my laptop. And these first couple of examples are of um, reports written against the sample company in, for Dynamics GP. And in this case, I'm connecting using the um, um, data gateway, so the on-premise data gateway. So let's start here with the sales tab. So these two reports are more sales related. And then the next example we get to, I'll, I'll look more at it from the general ledger perspective. Uh, so here I've got, I'm gonna just give you a little lowdown on the layout here. So the first thing you're gonna do when you start using Power BI desktop is you're gonna have to connect to the data. And I'm not gonna go into the details of that on today's webinar. But essentially, you connect to the data, and then you're going to have to do a little work to get relationships between the data that you pull in and established and make sure data types are correct, dates look like dates, and that kind of thing. And at that point, then you're able to start creating um, visualizations. So you could look over here on the right, we've got a whole bunch of different visualizations available to you to use. I'm gonna go ahead and scrunch that out of the way now. Um, and then let's kind of talk about some of the components on here. So up at the top are called um, cards, and those are just a key, like key number that maybe you wanna spotlight. So in this case, I spotlighted revenue uh, for current year, prior year, year over year, um, revenue increase by percentage. I've got sales broken down by customer class. So we've got bar charts, and we've got line graphs, we've got tables, uh, we've got, um, you can put slicers on, maybe some of you Excel users are familiar with slicers, but slicers 
allow you to create a filter that's easy for the consumer of the report to use. So in my case, I've filtered on a specific year and the first three months of the year. The second sheet, this has more examples of some additional types of visuals. There's, we've got, um, this is a tree map. We've got um, some geographic information. Uh, a couple of things I want to point out are um, with Power BI, the interactiveness between the visualizations is really um, quite a quite fun, I think. Uh, so we've got here, I'm going to focus in, I'm from Minnesota, so I'm going to focus in on my customer class for Minnesota and Wisconsin. So if you watch, when I click on this, I, I'm adding another filter. So here now my my map is updated to just those two states. I can see that the sales person for this customer class is Sandra. I can see that Sandra has one, um, one customer with a past due balance and that she has 16 customers in her, um, under her group. Um, we can do some drill down features as well. So let me go back here and show you that. So I set up a hierarchy, hierarchy, excuse me, which allows me to to take this visualization margin by salesperson and actually drill down into greater detail. So I'm going to turn on drill down, and if I pick, let's pick Paul W. and he's just hovering over it, I can see um, the data details that his margin contribution is 227,000. And as soon as I drill down on this, next thing that happens is because I built the hierarchy the way I did, next thing I get is a breakdown for that salesperson for their his customers. And if I want to take that one step further, let's say I pick on Aaron Fitz and drill down. Now I can see for that customer what the break breakout of sales by item are. So that's pretty um, pretty powerful stuff. All right, so once you create your reports in the desktop version, you can go ahead and publish them to the cloud. It's as simple as going ahead and just clicking publish, and it doesn't take too long. I'll get a notification when it's done, and then we'll go up to powerbi.com. Uh, you know, I mentioned earlier the Power BI Pro license. One of the other features besides being allowed to uh, share reports across your organization is that uh, you can also create more than one workspace. So in my case right now, I just have the one, but you could create multiple workspaces. All right, I'll let that finish, but I'm going to go ahead and log into Power BI Pro or PowerBI.com. Okay, so this is the home page of PowerBI.com, and I'm going to go ahead and just jump right over to my workspace. And it's made up of uh, dashboards, reports, data sets, uh, and, and workbooks. And I have one um, set of reports that's actually based on an Excel workbook. And so that's what you'd see um, here. But generally, most people are just going to have stuff published in these other sections. So data sets, reports, and dashboards. Um, so I just uploaded my GP reports. And so you can see that here. So right as soon as you publish, you're going to end up with a data set and you're going to end up with your reports. Dashboards are created from, from within PowerBI.com. Those do not, do not come from your um, desktop application. So I'm going to take a look at another set of reports here. And this example is coming from Sage Intact, 
and it's focusing on dimensions and custom fields from the general ledger, and we're connected using the CData connector. And the backstory on this data is this is um, data from a, an organization that has a hockey team and, um, and the arena. And they wanted to be able to track uh, information about the events that they hold at the arena. So not only do they have the hockey games, they also host um, other sporting events, in particular basketball, and then they have um, concerts and family events. And so, Using the dimensions and custom fields in power in Sage Intact allows you to get, you know, uh, leverage the information in reports. So I've got here um, a, a, the report itself is made up of multiple pages. And this first report is sort of a high level look at um, the events. So we've got income broken out by event type. We can see that family events at this time are the most profitable. We've got revenue broken out by event type. We see um, with the matrix against the different um, types, we've got a top 10 events. So you can rank um, your, your uh, tables. Uh, we've got some key cards looking at revenue and then i took that a little bit further and broke out between the different event types so if we look at say concerts we've got um we broke it out over genre and so we can see a little information about that we can see how we're doing um, this year over last year. Is there any um, insight in terms of which day of the week we might have more revenue? Is there any clear trend there? Um, what's our income by month? That kind of thing. And if you take this set of reports, you can leverage, you know, think about that in terms of, you know, how else might you do that for your company? Maybe you want to report by department or you want to look into detail at your project activity or tracking grants. Um, if you're a retail organization, you might want to analyze your data by store. Um, if you're healthcare, maybe you have clinics and you want to look at profitability of your clinics or, you know, as we saw in Jay's slide earlier, how your uh, physicians are producing, that kind of thing. So there's lots and lots of things that you can do with Power BI to gain insight into your knowledge. Um, so let me jump off of these two reports and just maybe show you a little bit more about what else you can do in PowerBI.com. So I'm going to go back to my workspace. If I take, um, I go to, yeah, so here, let me go back, let me go back into here, Arendelle Events. So here's a, here's a dashboard. So how these little tiles got on this dashboard, which, which can only be created in PowerBI.com, is back in the report, what you do is um, you choose to pin the visuals to your dashboard. So if I wanted to add, say, um, maybe this, this one here for sports, the breakdown between um, basketball and hockey. So if you, if you hover over here, you can kind of see a pin. Just click on the pin and then you can add it to an existing dashboard or create a new one. And you'll see it's also referencing if you want to create phone views because Power BI is also an app you can download to your Apple or Android um, phones. And then you log into your PowerBI.com account and you can see any of the things that are on your workspace or on your dashboards. Okay, so if I go back over here to the dashboard, I just added that new. So now I've got this third tile and where dashboards would come in is if you publish reports across to your organization, different users are gonna to wanna to consume different pieces of information. So this is really something that per user, they can create their own dashboards. You can rearrange them any way you want, um, you know, grab from a variety of different reports as to what you want to see on your um, dashboard. The other couple of things that are kind of cool here are, um, if we go to the data set, 
tab, and if I take um, Arendelle Ice again, for example, you can actually, if you like to consume your data in Excel, you can choose to analyze in Excel. So I'm just going to download that real quick. And it's over on the other screen. Let me grab it. Oops, I clicked the wrong button. Bear with me. There we go. So now here in Excel, I'm all poised to create pivot tables. All my data points are here. I can just start dragging and dropping. So if you're a big fan of Excel, um, that's pretty neat. And the nice thing about it is if, if you're using something like Power BI and you have a common data model that's being used by your organization, no matter how the reports are created, at least you know you have one source of truth. I'm going to go ahead and close out of here. Um, let's see, what else can I show you? Uh, reports, workbook data, dashboards. Um, so here's another one that's kind of interesting. This is a one I just grabbed off the, downloaded somewhere off the web, but this is some examples or samples. So this is on um, customer profitability. Uh, so if you drill down on a dashboard, it will actually take you back to the actual, should take you back to the report. Yep, so here I am on the report itself. So there is drill back from your dashboards. Uh, and I, this is the one I really wanted to show you. It's, um, this is an example of something that was built, you know, for consuming on a, a mobile device. So you can imagine here's your sales rep out in the field and they've got, you know, this powerful piece of information right on their phone, you know, and number of customers, you know, how they're doing in their territory, that kind of thing. The last thing I'm going to show you here is um, I go back to reports. And if I do, again, my customer profitability example, the other thing you have available is this quick insights. So you can click right on here and it just takes a second and it takes it reviews your data and then it comes up with its own set of visuals that might be of interest. I mean, not, not all of them are good. Um, so here we've got um, it says that North and East have noticeably more total revenue. Um, the U.S. has a lot more cities than the, other, the sales from the other com um, countries. A count of executives, not quite sure why that, that, these two are too helpful, but that's, that's something that you can do. And then also users in PowerBI.com can take the data sets and create their own reports. So if I was going to do, um, go back to Arendelle Ice again, here I have a workspace that probably looks very familiar based on when we were in the Power BI desktop app. And here's all my data fields over here. Here's my, my visualizations. So maybe I wanna do a pie chart this time. And I will take, um, I'll find my revenue. Oops, wrong field. I opened the wrong table. There we go. So let me take revenue as my value. And let's take that by event type.
site. And if you want to filter your data, it's simple as throwing a slicer on this a slicer visualization. Let me do that real quick. that back to Python. And I'll just grab year. So here we have a slider bar, so we can do it that way, or we can change it to be um, a, check, a checklist. And then we can pick our year. So that's creating a report on the fly from powerbi.com with, with the published um, data set. So that's gonna conclude my um, Power BI demo. I'm going to hop back to the slide show. All right, I want to wrap up. I've got a couple more healthcare examples. Um, and I thought these were interesting. These are also created by Jay Zwacker. Uh, because they're breaking down sort of demographics about uh, patients and certain health conditions. And I think all of us have seen quite a few graphics like this in the recent times. Um, it really is something that we're seeing everywhere, breaking the statistics of, excuse me, COVID down by sex and age and, um, uh, underlying conditions, that kind of thing. So I thought this was kind of a, a another cool um, Power BI visualization. This was done by in conjunction with Microsoft and uh, USAFacts.org, and they um, partnered together to get this site um, published out, out on the web. And when you guys get your copy of the uh, slideshow, uh, this is actually a hyperlink, so if I was to click on this right now, it would take me right to the um, the actual website. And they are also allowing you to get free access to the same data. So if you're interested in playing around with Power BI and you want to do it with COVID-19 data, um, there's a link for you to do that. Uh, and then if you happen to be a uh, state or local government that would like to have some assistance from Microsoft to publish up-to-date COVID information, uh, they are providing a free um, toolkit, toolkit for that. So with that, I think we're ready to open up to questions. Yeah. Awesome. Thanks, Linda. Um, if anybody has any questions, feel free to type them in. I saw a couple come through, so I'm just going to kind of go down the line for those. But again, feel free to type anything that you think of. Um, Linda, one of the questions was, how easy is this to use with Mac? Because this person, they've experienced um, issues before on a Mac. Well, um, Philip, maybe you could answer sure. that one since you're a Mac user. Yeah, I'll, I'll take that one. And I admittedly had stepped away from the Mac for a little while. I miss it. Um, I tell Yelena all the time I want to go back to the Mac. But um, I, I don't believe that there is a Mac client for Power BI. I think that's one of the areas where Microsoft has kind of drawn a line in the sand. I, I did a quick Google search and couldn't find one anyway. Um, I know the uh, PowerBI.com then would definitely be an option. Would um, would just love to hear more about the issues that you're having and and see. Um, it, it may be that your know, Mac users, at least for now, are uh, going to use more of a PowerBI.com to both design and publish the reports. So. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Um, another one is: Can you give pros and cons of Power BI as compared to Crystal Reports? And tap below. I don't know if, if I'm saying that correctly, but yep, you did. You did. 
Um, I can't speak personally about Tableau. I, my understanding is Tableau is very similar to Power BI. It's more visualization driven. Um, my experience, personal experience with Crystal Reports is they were much, and, and it may have changed. It's been a few years since I've used it. But those reports are typically more um, table-like or subtotaling sections, um, less less in the graphical in terms of tables and or charts and graphs kind of thing. Um, but I could be out of the loop since I haven't used Crystal Reports. Also, right. Crystal Reports, I don't know that you can publish to the cloud. Um. I would say Power BI, as far as Crystal goes, has a lot more capabilities for the visualization, um, just from what I've seen and, and from what I've done with Crystal Reports, and it could have changed a lot over the years as well. Um, the biggest thing with Tableau, in, in my opinion, with the differences is just with the scale. Um, I think Tableau is generally targeted at larger environments with much larger volumes of data. Um, than uh, than typically what Power BI uh, will will handle easily, uh, but they're very similar. Uh, other than that, okay. And then I have two, a couple more. Um, many of these reports are similar to Sage Impact already. What is the benefit of Power BI or like the differentiator? Yep. So uh, the biggest differentiator with it is uh, pulling data from multiple platforms. Um, it, it, you can pull data from Sage Intact. You could combine it with data from an on-premise SQL environment. Um, you know, Linda said we've we've got some data written uh, with a program called ConnectWise, which is can be an on-premise or could be a hosted um, SQL-based application. And so with Power BI, you could pull operational data out of uh, a system like a ConnectWise or maybe a, a dental management system or practice management system of some kind, um, a donor management system, and combine it with Sage Impact data uh, to give you, say, one dashboard that an executive could look at that would have operational data metrics as well as financial data metrics in it um, and gather it all in one place. I, I will also say that um, the the capabilities of Power BI will resemble intact financial report writer capabilities to some degree, but there are uh, Power BI has full access to all the different data components of Intact. So you could do uh, distribution-based reports. You can do project-based reports. You can you can access data in the sub-modules of Intact that the financial report writer can't necessarily do. Um, and it's it's got a lot of power and capabilities to it above and beyond what Intact has. So one other thing and really any know. application. It's not not picking on Intact, but GP or Business Central as well. It's it's got a lot of additional reporting capabilities that aren't built into most accounting applications. Other thing I would add is if you're on a subscription based cloud ERP system, you know what is the price of a license compared to say a Power BI license if all you are getting that license for is to share the reports that are within that ERP system. So there might be a, even a financial consideration there. Right. right. Yeah. Um, es okay. Especially if you can consider you can write the reports and view the reports yourself or send them to PDF and do all that uh, more or less for free. Sorry, Elena. No, you're good. Um, there's a lot coming in. Um, this one was, can you have multiple slicers on a single dashboard? Yes, you can have, as far as I know, as many as you want. At some point, it becomes self-defeating. But yes, you can put, um, 
yeah, I could have put a slicer out there for event type. I could have put a slicer out there for department. I could put a slicer out there for item number. I mean, anything you can think of. Okay. And then last one I had was, can you create financial statements in Power BI? This one came in earlier. Um, I would not say Power BI lends itself to, to traditional financial statements. Um, you, you're not likely, I, I suppose it could be done. I'm just not sure it'd be the best tool for financial statements. Okay, awesome. Well, thank you guys. Can you skip just one more slide so I can put on the contact information sure. in case anybody has any other questions? Um, again, if you want more information, there is that survey at the end um, that you can click into, and then um, you will be receiving a recording in the slide deck afterwards. So, um, okay, sorry, I have one more question real quick. If you download <laughs> QuickBooks data into Excel for additional calculations, can Power BI replace that? Uh, can Power BI replace Excel? Or you could, if you download data from QuickBooks, like on premise, not in the cloud, to Excel, mm -hmm. you could connect to the Excel workbook, workbook from Power BI to create reports. Yes, if that was the mm -hmm. question. And, and and I guess a follow-up question would be, is there a connector, if she wanted to use Power BI instead of Excel, is there a connector for QuickBooks Online, maybe? There is work, a right? connector for QuickBooks Online, yes. Okay. But QuickBooks on prem, no. Have to be on the cloud uh, version. Interesting. Okay. okay. Yeah, so if all else awesome, fails, nice. well, one use our, oh, sorry. I was just yep, going to go say ahead. if all else fails and you want to use Power BI and you don't know that you have a connector and you can get data into Excel, Excel is one of the things you can connect to from Power BI. So even if you just want to use it to to play around in Power BI. Okay. Um, nice. I think that's it. I don't see anything else, but um, an engaging group. So we appreciate that. And again, thanks everybody for joining us. We're here if you have any questions, any more interest, want to take a deeper dive, um, just reach out to one of us. And again, you'll be receiving that follow-up email anyways. Um, so yeah, again, everyone stay safe out there and thank you. Thanks, Linda and Phillips. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank have you. Thank you. Bye,